All right, my friends, Bill Chu is on the road. We're out at our ranch project. This is a really cool project that we're building with Lake Plato Architects. And the project is like four or five buildings that are all connected with these really neat uh, roof designs. Benson Wood panelized everything and brought it all out to the site on several trucks because uh, it was actually built in New Hampshire. And then our carpenters, uh, Becca Construction, who is also uh, working on the siding today, put everything together. This is a really fun project. But on today's video, you can see the crew is just getting started on the Shishugiban siding on the outside with some really nice details. We've got some really cool siding details in this project that I wanna go over with you today. We're gonna to talk about two different rain screen uh, details, and we're gonna show you some really cool wood siding, wood soffit details that Daniel, the project manager, has absolutely nailed. Let's go meet Daniel on the site. Today's build show is sponsored by Keen Building Products. Let's get going. All right, guys, y'all met Daniel Glauser. Daniel, looking good out here, dude. Thanks, good to see you. I mean, there is so many details to talk about here. Yeah. Where do we even start? Well, uh, I guess we could start a few months ago. We uh, did a mock-up mm -hmm. of what we got on this siding here. Um, just to work out all the details, it's a pretty complicated project and there's a variety of ways that you can do your rain screen. So we yeah. tested it out and uh, came up th with this option. Um, we got Shishugi Bond. Yeah, so this is a Kebony material that Delta Millworks is actually making the charred face for you, right? Yeah, that's correct. And then your soffit is going to be not this, though. No, the soffit is just a clear hemlock. Okay, gotcha. I like that stark contrast yeah, between the really black nice. and the real clear hemlock. Yeah, it looks really nice. That's going to look awesome. Yeah. And from a distance, you can't tell how you fasten this, but then when you get up close, you can see we've got a face fastener. Talk to me about face fasteners versus a concealed fastener yeah so um we went with the face fastener on this one um partly because of the architectural design but yep. you got to use a specific fastener um, we used a stainless steel fastener that's coated black mm -hmm. um, so that you don't see it uh, we have to line everything up in a jig in order to get those straight lines um, because you can see them and it's a, you know, it's a pretty solid application because you've got quite a few fasteners. Yeah, you really do. Now, I noticed that Brian and the crew from Becca put this, uh, gosh, I don't know what you call like this. Like a ledger? Like a ledger board, that's right, almost yeah. like a deck ledger. He's tap con that into the concrete and then attach this on top. So literally, he's just setting the boards on top. Yeah. And it's a single board from this ledger all the way up to the soffit. Yeah, that's right. The layout is fairly simple in that it starts at the same place and ends at the same place. So mm -hmm. that dimension is stable across. That's really nice. We shot a laser, put the ledger down, and that way it can go fairly quickly. Yeah, that's smart. Now this is a uh, shiplap pattern, yeah. not a tongue and groove. Correct. So we're using two fasteners every, what is that, two foot on center? It's something? roughly, it's 22 inches, yeah. Okay. Gotcha. And this is a T15 bit, so kind of a smaller bit. Almost, I would consider that a trim head screw. It is a trim head screw, that's correct. And I would say when I pulled up, I can't tell that it's that it's a face fastener. It really goes away. When you get up close, you do see it, right? You see a little bit of a mark on there, but I think that's the that's the beauty of the Shishugiban is it's not perfect. Yeah. It's got some undulation, it's got character, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. And we did actually test out um, with a non-coated stainless steel where you could see it more prominently and it didn't look quite as good. Yeah. So we, uh, we definitely went with the black on that. That makes sense. Now talk to me about your rain screen details. This is that Keen product, right? I yeah. think it's called drywall. Yep, yep. The first strips that they um, apply, basically we you know, snapped based on our layout. We um, snapped the chalk line. Mm -hmm. We're able to just staple this on with a slap hammer. Oh, you snapped, that's what this is right here. This is a chalk line so you could know that these screws are in the middle exactly. roughly of that. Yeah, that's exactly oh, that's right. Smart. That's smart. I exactly got it. Right. And this is just a slap stapler. That's right. Nothing special here. Nothing special. That's okay, right. so you, you ran a chalk line, ran those underneath. I think what's cool about this is normally you see this in vertical. Like when I used this on my shed, I ran it on vertical. But in this case, we ran it horizontal. Uh, and then when you get to the top, you're going to have a gap at the top before we hit to that hemlock, right? Right, that's exactly right. So we want to maintain airflow all the way up. So there's a gap at the top and then our uh, hemlock soffit material that will come in at an angle. Mm -hmm. 
So we're keeping a gap at the top so that if any water gets behind our soffit material, it'll drain out in front of this. Yeah. Um, and it's also maintaining an air gap so that there's continuous airflow from the bottom all the way to the top. And then we'll have another piece of the uh, keen at the very top there, just behind that flashing piece so that that air can escape if it needs to. I like that. And then bug screen at the bottom is really simple and inexpensive. This looks to me like uh, this is some fiberglass bug screen slap stapled it up put the keen on flapped it back up and now we've got a nice bug screen on the bottom yeah that's exactly right and it was easy we just took a 48 inch roll on the chop saw chopped it down into eight inch pieces and then you know we have 100 feet of continuous that's smart i'm also noticing that your siding is running a little bit low which is nice because then you can cover up that air sealing detail between your uh, benson wood panels or, or your zip in this case basically and your uh, concrete foundation. Now we've done this uh, multiple ways in the past, uh, but you chose to use the Sega, is that the Fentrim? The Fentrim, tape? that's correct, yeah. How did that work for you? Felt like that stuck really well? Oh yeah, it's tenacious. Um, we actually, in a few places on another part of the building, um, this was down a little bit too low and we had to remove it so that we wouldn't see it and it was, it did not come off. You easy. had to destroy it to get it <laughs> off? Yeah. That's awesome. Um, yeah, but no, I absolutely love using the Fentrim to seal that transition there. It's, um, it goes on fairly quickly and is, is rock solid. Yeah, that's nice. Now, if you didn't want to get that tape, another option that we've done a lot is we've used Liquid Flash uh, from Huber or you could use a ProSco product. You do some, uh, some nice strong duct tape up against that concrete. You would go ahead and run those two beads and smooth them out. Pull that duct tape off. Now you've got a nice uh, clean line across there. Yeah. And then I've also noticed that you've got these really nice jam extensions because this, this is a pretty deep wall. Our walls are what, 10 inches thick? Uh, this, roughly 10 inches, yeah. Something like that. And you've got a window from Rainier's that's set back mm -hmm. rather than kind of set forward like a more traditional window. Right. So then the guys made these uh, wood bucks later. Right. Yeah. So we, before these wood bucks went on, um, our rough opening is actually sloped at the bottom. So we mm -hmm. have drainage to the outside. Nice. Um, I have a, a back dam that's underneath the window frame there. Killer. Um, so nothing can go in that direction. Mm -hmm. And then we fully waterproof the entire opening with liquid flash. Um, and then used uh, Sega Fentrim to get the frame to the liquid flash. I love it. And then this tape on the front that's taped to this uh, cypress material, this is really just to keep bulk water from getting in there. Yeah. And I've noticed also that you're open on the bottom, which is really smart. So anything that gets in can get out. That's right. This isn't doing air sealing details. This is really just to keep extra water out of that cavity. Yeah, that's right. All the air sealing is done back behind here at the window frame. Yeah, smart. I'm assuming that you're going to probably do a relatively cock-free install on this, right? Because you've got the Shishugi Bond, which doesn't lend itself to wanting a bead of cock on it. So are you just going to run that Shugi Bond so it's an eighth inch or so That's right. uh, we'll, from here? Yeah, we'll keep a little bit of a gap. There won't be any caulk on here anywhere. Um, just a, a little bit of a gap to allow you know anything to get out that needs to get out. Yeah, and just keep that cavity black, basically. That's right. Which, uh, by the way, reminds me, when I saw Brian making your head flashing, you've got a black head flashing, but the backside of that flashing, of course, is not black. <laughs> yeah, right. So I saw Brian using the spray paint cans. Really smart. He put yeah. wings on the sides of his head flashing there and that head flashing is again almost double duty it's it's not necessarily doing air sealing this is also flashed back at the window but any water that does get back there in some crazy blowing rain is going to want to kick out yeah uh, and those wings also give you that air gap uh, to allow air behind that um, rain screen which is formed again by that keen yeah now i think this keen is 0.4 inches so it's just shy of a half inch. That's correct. And so you can't quite get your finger back there, but it's pretty close. That's going to that's gonna provide lots of drainage and drying when you come out there. Yeah. What other details did I miss as we were talking about this? Matt, did you see how good this internal gutter is looking? That's pretty awesome, I got to say. Yeah, it's a neat detail. So we've uh, fabricated these outriggers uh -huh. um, out of some steel square tubing, and those hold a double LSL fascia that's mm -hmm. uh, on the outside there. And then we've got our gutter, which is, you know, galvanized, but it is impregnated or coated with uh, the PVC on the, yeah. uh, on the upside, which is then fully lapped up and over the front on this side and then up onto the roof on that side. 
So it's a completely continuous um, water barrier. That's pretty awesome. And then the metal roof on top of that. And then the metal roof on top so of that and the uh, fl flashing on the outside. So it's kind of totally hidden in there. Can't see it, But yeah. still has that real iconic, uh, you know, Lake Flato ranch look that they're absolutely known for. Yeah, that's right. Um, you got another type of cabiny going on with a different rain screen, don't you? Yeah, we do. So um, there's an, a separate building from this one, um, the exercise pod, which is down the hill. And there, we didn't use exposed fasteners. Mm -hmm. We used Kebony's grad system, which is a click-in system. So it's a track um, on the back of the Kebony. There are grooves routed in there, and it just snaps into place. Ooh, very cool. I'm going to go meet Brian over there and see if he can give me a, a, a quick tour of that. Yeah, absolutely. All right, thanks, Daniel. I'll see you back in a minute. All right, sounds good. All right, guys, let me introduce you to Brian from Becca Construction. Brian, amazing carpentry on this exercise pod here at this ranch project. I mean, you don't see any fasteners on this building whatsoever. Are there any fasteners? There's uh, one fastener per board. Okay, so one on the entire vertical face yeah. and that's it. Yes, sir. Now you use this rail system. This is called GRAD or the GRAD system from Kebony, right? Yes, sir. And this is their mini rail. Their so mini talk rail. to me about how you laid it out and installed these. This is my first time working with it and I was very, very surprised on how well it works and how strong it is. Um, awesome. There was a little bit of learning curve as far as doing the corners and everything, but um, it worked out really, really well. How long did it take you to do this building all four sides? Um, I would say hourly, it would probably be in between 35 to 40 hours between all this. And that's really figuring out a oh, lot of all. a really a lot of corner details because um, when you come around a corner, mm -hmm. uh, you obviously have uh, metal butting into metal, so you can't have that. So you have to lay, you have your first benchmark on this wall, your next one going on this mm -hmm. has to sit on top of this, and this is the back reveal of the board. Ah. So you lay your adjacent piece starting to the back of this plastic and roll. Gotcha. It's, it's, not, it's really a seamless system that worked out really, really well. That's sweet. Now you saved me a board or two, right? To, I got three boards me? ready for you to rock and roll. So. Let's get up and we'll show you yes, the last sir. three boards in the building. All right, last few boards on this one. Brian's showing us how to do it. So this is a uh, shiplap pattern. So you can see he's kind of angling that board in and then it's just a tappity tap, right, Brian? Yes, sir. Just a simple tap and no fasteners. That's you pretty awesome. Move around where we have a good reveal. Yeah, that's pretty and, awesome. Uh, Extremely efficient product. Thanks for saving the last two boards for me. As far as uh, now, it's all done, you really see how easy it is. Now, to take these back off, you could slide these boards up, right? Yes, sir. That is they would slide option. on that rail. Yes, sir. But if you were captured in the top and bottom, you'd have to destroy the board to get it off. That'd be the only, that's really the only downside do I see with this if system. You, if you do not, yeah, if you have a Eve up here to yeah. restrict you from that. Yes, and this sir. is called the Kebony Grad system. Mm -hmm. How hard was it to put those rails up in the uh, correct locations, Brian? Extremely, extremely easy as far as um, we had a layout at 24 inches mm -hmm. and um, simply pop lines on a wall and follow that and nailed it into our 24 inch studs. And it's a really good product as far as you know where your last board's going to end up on the corner when you lay it all oh, out. That's right. Yeah. So once you have it laid out, it's uh, extremely efficient as far as the uh, carpenters putting it on. Cool. All you do is snap it in and it's, um, it's really a foolproof product. I like it. Snap those last two boards and we'll go downstairs and I got a couple of more questions for you about the install process. But what's happening here, just so we will understand, is this comes pre-milled from Kebony like this with this slot in it. And then Kebony sells these clip systems as well that goes with it. That's not made by Kebony, it's made by another manufacturer. And then Brian on site is always doing is really cutting these to length and snapping them in. And this little exercise pod has a really cool kind of square detail with this really nice gray PVC roof. We've got one internal drain right here in the center. And boy, some amazing views from inside this building. Pretty cool. One thing I do want to mention is you get this unfinished edge up here, but we're not worried about this. This Kebony has a 50 year structural warranty. No big deal for that to gray out uh, or be exposed to the elements of the sun over time. Nice work, Brian. Let's get downstairs, brother. 
Hey, one last question for you, Brian. How does yes, this sir. compare to the ship lap that you're doing on the other side where you've got the face screws? You think this is, uh, you know, 25% faster? Is it 50% faster? I would say application, it varies as far as where you're putting it, but I would probably say in between 35 to 40% faster. And, um, I, and you have, in the way I work, we have less people on the job because I don't have to have screws going all the way up here. Right. I have one person nailing the system, and once it's nailed up there, I can have one guy snapping in boards. Oh, so, that's pretty fast. So as far as you know, efficiency and the cost of the the project, um, it definitely works out because you're accomplishing everything as far as substructure, everything like that, by simply nailing this grid system on right, there. You don't need a separate range. No, you and separate fast exactly, and, and, and we don't have. A thousand fasteners in our yeah, building so. where you're pre-drilling and all yeah. that kind of stuff yeah it's simply nailed on there every 24 inches with a coil nailer and uh, ring shank galvanized nails and nice. yeah so i would i'd say it's better than conventional methods so you're going to spend a little bit more for the grad system but you're probably going to save that back in labor is what it sounds like of course yeah of course Good and, stuff, and, man. and time of project so. well done sir Thank impressive you, job on this yeah, project sir. man i really appreciate it man. very it's impressive been, you're yeah. a heck of a carpenter man i really, I really appreciate, appreciate your hard work on this job yeah, it's been let's end the video with uh daniel back up at the main house all right matt we did this wall yesterday check it out man it looks so good you know from a distance you have no idea there's fasteners but then when you get up you know, you're two feet on. Now you can see the fasteners. They really do disappear, though. Yeah, I think that's the beauty of the design. It looks great. I like it. I'm assuming this Arlington inbox will get a coat of black paint. Yeah, that's right. It will. It'll be an electrical outlet in there. Yep. Uh, and then we got some fixtures in the wall. And once that hemlock gets up here, I'm really excited to see that uh, black with light soffit. That's going to look really awesome. It really is, yeah. Super cool project, man. You are nailing the details, bro. Oh, thanks so much. Yeah, it's uh, really great to work with uh, such amazing architecture. And uh, I got to say, the Bensonwood guys really nailed it. Um, being able to work off of these panelized systems mm -hmm. where the walls are dead flat and everything fits together, is it's, it's nice. Huge fan of the Bensonwood system. This is our second project with them. Man, I wish, I wish we did one a year with those guys. Yeah. They do really good work. Daniel, thanks for the tour today, man. Absolutely. Beautiful work. Guys, go follow thanks. Daniel on Instagram. He's posting pictures from this amazing project of ours, and he is doing a fantastic job. Big thanks to Keen for sponsoring today's video. They've got a whole host of other rain screen products. They also have a lot of noise control products. This is a really cool company that you're going to definitely want to check out what's in their catalog. And by the way, if you're not subscribing to our newsletter, I'm going to send you twice a week an email that will tell you what's new on thebuildshow.com. We actually have 10 new videos a week there, uh, including our two that we're publishing over here to YouTube. So follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.